Hi everybody, this is Kent, and this is the post and beam greenhouse we built in the garden. And in this series of videos, I'm going to go through step by step how we put this together. In the last episode of this series, I cut and installed the rafters, put up the polycarbonate glazing on the walls and roof, and added the ridge cap. In this episode, I'll finish the glazing, add the fan and vents, and install the door. I was carefully planning my cuts with the available sheets of polycarbonate left from my order. I have the front wall, the back wall, and both gable ends yet to glaze. I have some ripped pieces left from the side walls in the roof, and a few whole sheets to work from, and I think I'll have a little bit left over when it's all done. I was trying to have full height pieces to fill in the rest of the locations left to glaze, so I wouldn't have any horizontal seams to deal with. I'd rather have more leftover pieces than seams, and these leftovers can be used in other projects like winter cold frames in the garden, for example. Given all that, the next pieces to install would be at the front of the greenhouse on each side of the door. These were cut to length, then ripped to width with my circular saw. Then J-channel added to the top and bottom of the panel, and attached to the cedar studs with rubber washer roofing screws. On the edges, I added 3 quarter by 3 quarter inch cedar strips. These are the same as the strips I added between the sidewall panels in the previous episode. Up on the gable ends, I cut some triangular pieces of the polycarbonate to cover each side. I made a cardboard pattern first and test fit them before copying the shape onto the glazing. And these also have J-channel to seal the top and bottom edges. And the bottom J-channel has drain holes drilled into it, spaced about 12 inches or so. You can see here that I've over-tightened the screws, and they've warped the panel at those points. I made a habit of checking each one after to see if any screws needed to be backed off a bit. You need to look at the panel from the side to see this. With the gable ends done, I just have to finish glazing the back wall. I did add some horizontal bracing between the studs for more support of the polycarbonate. As I have narrow panels left over, I would need a 3 quarter by 3 quarter cedar strip at each stud to fill the gaps and make the back wall look uniform in appearance. With all the glazing now complete, we can remove the temporary braces from the inside of the stud walls. Marilyn was looking forward to this, so she took it on. Last one. Last one. We bought a louvered three-speed fan for the north gable end. It slid in the opening and was held with screws through the metal flange. This fan has a thermostat, so it will automatically come on and cool the greenhouse when it reaches the temperature set on the dial. We did buy an aluminum louvered vent for the front gable end opening, but we didn't like how it looked. So I decided to make my own from cedar, and I'll include this with the plans I have available for download from my website at manabouttools.com greenhouse. Link in the top right and in the description below. I cut and ripped some cedar to make the box that will fit into the framed opening at the front gable end. I screwed some stops to my workbench at right angles to hold these pieces square while I glue and assemble them. And I used brad nails with an air nailer, followed by screws. I'll test fit the first louver, and it's snug and should just fit. Then I can add some glue and tack it into place with nails. I used a small speed square to make sure it was resting at 45 degrees. Then I'll add the rest of the louvers. The bottom louver I forgot to cut down flush with the box, so I ran it through my table saw to fix that oversight. I'll set that aside and make the frame that will rest against the glazing on the gable end wall. And this piece is more like a picture frame. And I can glue and nail that together.
and that piece will be glued and nailed to the box. This vent was simple to build and I thought it looked really sharp. When the glue was dry, I gave it two or maybe it was three coats of the same stain I've been using on the rest of the frame, and I covered more details of the staining in part one of the series. In preparation to install the greenhouse door, I added some hinges, stops, and spacers to the 4x4 door frame and the overhead front tie beam. These gate hinges have a fixed pin, so I'll have to support the door in its final position while I run in the screws. The spacers and stops I added will help with this. And I have a lever at the bottom I can operate with my foot to prop the door up and carry its weight. I slowly brought the door into the opening and up against the stops. Then lifted it with the lever and added a clamp to hold it. Then I'll run in screws for the hinges. Then remove the stops and check the swing of the door. And that worked okay. I cut a wooden threshold from treated lumber that I'll need to attach to the concrete. I drilled some holes with a concrete bit and tapped in some plastic anchors. Then some of that blue plastic and rubber barrier to keep the wood from wicking moisture from the concrete. Then some screws. Good enough. Then I can add some permanent stops for the door. And here's the gable vent going in and it was attached with screws through the box and into the studs. For the glazing in the door, I first added a bead of clear silicone, then laid in the polycarbonate panel. I drilled pilot holes around the perimeter and ran in some washer head GRK screws. And the same with the upper panel. Both these panels had J-channel on the top and bottom edges, and the bottom channel had drain holes added. And these two panels will give the door shear strength to prevent sagging on the handle side, so I didn't need to add any angled supports like you'd see on a fence gate, for example. That's also why I use lap joints that are glued and screwed when I built this door. After I added the fan and gable vent, I realized I needed more vents. The fan was strong enough to open the door due to the negative pressure it developed in the greenhouse. I have a screen door latch on the door and it's spring loaded and the vacuum was able to overcome that. So I made two more wooden louver vents and added some 2x4 blocking to the lower side walls. And I cut a hole in the glazing with a razor knife. These two lower vents will also add some better air circulation as they're low on the wall instead of up higher like the gable vent. And these were straightforward to install. Screws run in through the box of the vent into the stud walls. And after I added a bead of clear silicone to the top and side edges where the vent flange touches the glazing. To keep critters out, I stapled on some galvanized hardware cloth to the inside of each of the three vents. And that's about it, the greenhouse is done. Next I'll be adding a sink, lights, and some garden boxes and work tables. And I hope to get all that done this winter. Please leave me a comment or any questions you have. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.